everybody, it's Dave Finale. I am live now. As you can see, I am all alone, uh, but that will only be short-lived. I didn't want to wait longer than five minutes or so. Um, we're listening to, I do not have the rights to this music. This is Rod Stewart. Some guys have all the luck, if you can hear it. But we're going to shut that down. Uh, we have Sean Kokoska coming out with us, who honestly was stuck in a grocery line um, earlier today. And uh, that is why he is uh, um, a little bit um, late coming on. Uh, so I want to talk to you about about a lot of different things. And, and, and one of the things we're going to get into a little bit today is, is systems and processes. And I and to start off, this is Real Estate Talk TGIF episode 91. We'll get into the intro in a few minutes. Um, but um, the interesting part of what we're going to do is tools, systems, and processes. A tool, is a, a tool is an implement. A system is using those tools to put things together to operate in, all in a certain way. And then a process takes all those things together and makes them work uh, in sync. Um, so um, we're going to talk a lot about that, how tools are. Tools can be CRMs. It can be a pen. It can be uh, a journal. If you don't have a journal, you should really have a journal. And that is one of the best ways. Um, hold on one second. In this day and age, guys, I'm sorry, but there are so many things going on these days um, that it's, it's, it's important to note that you know what? Life is just important. Life is just too slim for us these days. And I'm just trying to um, trying to put everything together. And, you know, the reason that Sean is, is a little bit late was he went really, really early to the grocery store and had to wait an hour and a half on a grocery line. Um, things are getting there. And, and here comes Sean with us right now. So, um, you know, things are... Um, Things are, are fluid, as they say, and as this episode 91 starts, we are in uncharted waters, and what we're trying to do is um, keep everybody on an even keel. We're, we're keeping our schedule going, so just so you know, we've got uh, some great things coming up. Next week, we have Tim Harris coming up with us, of, of Tim and Julie Harris. We've got um, scheduled for April 10th, we have Tim O'Keefe. Tim O'Keefe is a... Uh, an SEO specialist for real estate and everything else. And he'll be joining us uh, on April 10th. And, and we have also have on our schedule, but there's no guarantee we have Tom Ferry scheduled for April 7th. So that's the promo. And here we are. I want to welcome my guest, Sean Kokoska. How are you, man? Fantastic, David. How about you, man? I'm doing great. Um, grocery lines, eh? Uh, it was an interesting morning. I will tell you that much. Crazy yeah, I went to Home Depot there. yesterday and I had to wait online to get in. So that was interesting. So I want to welcome everybody. And we'll do the formal welcome. Welcome, everybody. This is Real Estate Talk TGIF, episode 91. And we all know what the TGIF stands for, don't we? That's right. Thank God it's finale. That is correct. It's all about me. You know that. The heck with the guest. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but here we are. We're here to have some fun. We're going to talk to an expert, a, a huge great in the field of, of real estate and coaching and training. And uh, Sean, welcome to our show today, to the broadcast. You know, thanks for coming on. David, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you, oh, you're welcome, man. I mean, you know, we, we like to have some fun on this thing, bring a lot of energy. And I, like, always, I always start with the same thing with everybody. And I say this the same way as your story. W where did you come from? I mean, you grew up, you got into real estate, you're, you're, you're a successful coach now. But what about everything in between? Uh, gosh, it's an interesting path that got me to where I'm at, no doubt. Well, first off, I was licensed when I was 20 years old. And right. I was probably one of the first buyer's agents on the face of the planet, David. That model really didn't exist back then. Um, oh, I, I joined my mother's team in real estate and together we, we built one really dynamic team, no doubt about that. Now, by the time I was 22 years old, I was closing over 100 buyer side transactions per year, year after year with one assistant. Now, I uh, learned a lot of lessons through that time, ultimately took over the buyer agent team and began uh, expanding my, my income through leverage, in essence, deriving compensation based on the production of others. So we created a compensation model for that lead buyer agent role, ultimately went over the list side of the business, took over the team, uh, eventually sold the team. Yet when I was 22, David, um, 
I was picked up by a guy named Howard Brinton with Star Power Systems. And he gave me my first stage and I started presenting all over the country for companies like isucceed.com, iReal, um, every state association that you could imagine, National Association of Realtors and, and everything in between. And I found myself on the road by about 26, 27 years old, on the road about 200 days per year. Now I built the team that I didn't need to be there anymore. I'd successfully leveraged through models, systems, technology, and people to derive compensation. In essence, I was a business owner in real estate. And prior to that, that leverage being in place, I wasn't a business owner at all. I was just a, a salesperson with a lot of responsibility and a lot of liability, right? So, you know, getting it to the position that I didn't necessarily need to be there any longer and being on the road 200 days per year, I learned a ton about this industry. There's no doubt. Now, in 1999, we had our first child, though. I was 28 years old. I said, I don't want to be on the road like that anymore. I want to be home to be with this baby. I want to raise this little boy. And uh, so I, I looked at my resource and I thought, well, what am I going to do? Because at the real estate team, I was more of a distraction, right? And I decided that I would start a mortgage company first followed quickly by a title company, then a land development company, and ultimately a new home building company. Now, the idea was uh, six income streams on one transaction, David. So I would represent- wait, 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 wait. Six income streams on one transaction, like you were representing a seller and you did all, or buyer and you did all that stuff. Right, well, for example, I represented my development company when we acquired the land, when we made the acquisition. And they right. paid me a, a nice commission, obviously, to make that happen. Then we would get entitlements in place, pulling curb, gutter, water, sewer, and we would sell the lots back to our building company. We'd peel off some profit there. Okay. Then we would build the home. We collected a supervision fee as part of our construction budget, which exceeded our expenses. So there was even more money there. And whether it was pre-sold or not, the real estate company listed the property. The mortgage company would provide the financing. And they'd be crazy not to use our mortgage company because we offer discount points and everything else. Exactly. To them. And the title insurance company would provide the insurance. Now, because everything we did, David, that was above a million dollars in sales price, the cycle started again for the mortgage company, the title company, and the real estate team because many of those buyers, well, they had a home they needed to sell before they could purchase, right? And right. in a way, it worked and it worked like a charm. In fact, at one point, David, we had 65% market share on any home being built above a million dollars within the Denver market and the surrounding suburbs. And wow. uh, I mean, it was, it was literally millions of dollars in income. Everything I touched, David, it turned to gold, right? Until 2008. And then- what happened then, Sean? I don't know. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I distinctly remember forgetting about all of this. Now, now the simple truth is that I, I was uh, in debt to the construction lenders, about $135 million. I, I lost $32 million of my own cash at that time in the market. I mean, dude, it was short sale after short sale. It was oh, represent, uh, you know, do, negotiating deeds in lieu of foreclosure. And it was, it was a painful. And it was painful for about 18 months. Um, my two partners that I had in the development company immediately came claim bankruptcy. And, and here I am with over a hundred homes under construction, 16 land developments going all at once and nobody wants what I've got to sell. So it was a very depressing time in my life, as you can well imagine. I mean, it was lonely, yeah. it was cold. I was the biggest victim on the face of the planet. I'm blaming everybody for my circumstance. I'm certainly complaining about everything and justifying every action that I'm taking. Now, what's that feeling? What's that feeling? Yeah. What's that? I know that feeling. It's an awful feeling. In fact, it, it got so depressing, David, that at one point I'm adding up my life insurance policy saying, you know, would, would my family be okay if I weren't here? And that was just a painful place to be. Now, at those moments of low, of the deepest, darkest places of depression, frankly, we've got the most opportunity for growth. And so I had two ways to go, right? And so I, I decided, well, let me see everything that I did up to that point. Really, there was no intentionality behind it. It was just really the, the relentless pursuit of more. And so there was no real purpose. There was no why behind it. So it, through that, that time of, of just self-discovery and, and reinventing myself, I, I just asked myself, where did I find the, the most fulfillment? And that was adding value to people, educating them. Um, frankly, what saved me was recognizing that the reason that I'm on the face of this planet is to, to help others from finding themselves first in that desperate financial position that I was in. Second, to really improve their lives through knowledge, skills, mindset, and habits to help them really uh, obtain that trajectory in their real estate career, to drive the cars that they deserve to drive, to live in the right. house they deserve to live in, right? To take those vacations, spend time with loved ones. And that became 
the why, the purpose, right, behind every action that I took. So I aligned myself with a guy named Gary Keller. And uh, with Diana Kokoska and myself, you know, we, we really went in and we, we took MAPS, Kato, uh, Keller Williams MAPS coaching, and we right. took that road to become the largest real estate company on the face of the planet. With over 5,000 one-on-one coaching clients, Diana and I created the, the BOLD program. Um, I presented the BOLD program for two and a half years or three years in three to four cities every single week, found massive fulfillment in that, and then ultimately went to work at KWRI Corporate uh, as what they called VP of growth. Yet we had 383% growth within about a 16 month period. They promoted me to president of Keller Williams Maps Coaching. Right. And uh, then ultimately Gary and I started a new company called Maps Business Training, where we consulted with all industries and organizations outside of real estate sales. So I consulted for companies like McDonald's and Panasonic, FedEx, Sport Clips, T-Mobile, Genentech, Pepsi, and about a thousand other companies you've never heard of before and really grew that organization at the same time. Yet ultimately made the decision end of 2016 to resign from that position. Because here's the point, if you don't create and stay true to your own vision, well, frankly, you become part of somebody else's. And that's what was right. Exactly. So, exactly. So I, I resigned, I started Icon Coaching early 2017. And man, it's just been a blast growing this and adding value to all of you. Well, that's excellent. I mean, that's that's, that's kind of uh, our connection, yours and mine, is through a guy by the name of Grant Wise, who uh, we both have worked with and, and and have become friends with. And Grant's a great, great guy. Um, actually, I'm going to tell you, I think today is his birthday. Oh, thanks. Tomorrow. I think tomorrow, tomorrow is his birthday. His 30th birthday, of course. But anyway, uh, so you talked about massive fulfillment. You know, there's two things I wanted to ask you about. One is you're trying to get people to get, I mean, you, the, your fulfillment was getting people to, for that lifestyle. And I, and, 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 and a buddy of mine, say Pyle says, always says, we, we work for a living and live for a lifestyle. Right. So it's like, we're looking for the fulfillment. People say, well, you know, my, my, my why is, is my kids or my why is that house or that car, whatever, but it's actually a feeling of accomplishment. Would you agree with that? Yeah, a hundred percent. And where I get that fulfillment, um, and that passion, that drive, what gets me up in the early in the morning and keeps me working late at night sometimes is just watching my clients improve to succeed, uh, especially in today's turbulent times to, to see that my clients are not even really feeling a blip in this. In fact, I spoke with one yesterday, you know, they got two properties under contract that day. I mean, even during this lockdown of the, the economy and everything else, people are still moving. And it's those that really have the right knowledge, the right skills, the right mindset, and most importantly, the right habits that are really crushing it even in today's weird times, right? Right. So, um, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, I mean, you and I are both involved with, with EXP Realty and <laughs> it's like they've seen a lot of posts out there by, by agents in EXP talking about the virtual world that we were prepared. Um, and I can't argue with that so much. Um, talk about virtual. Let, let's talk about virtual training. Let's talk about virtual, being virtual about it. Talk to about that because it's very apropos to where we're at. Well, absolutely. Um, well, first off, let's talk about it from the real estate agent's perspective. And how can you leverage technology to get a little more virtual, a little bit more digital with your approach and your strategies and your tactics? For example, when you when you uh, receive a buyer lead, let's just say, and you're able to convert them to an appointment, this is not necessarily it doesn't necessarily have to be a face to face type appointment. I mean, look what we're doing right now. Where are you located at, David? I'm in northern New Jersey, right outside of Manhattan. Fantastic. See, and I'm in Austin, Texas, and here we are having a meeting, right? So right. simply to, rather than scheduling a face-to-face, -face, why don't you schedule just a quick Zoom meeting where you can walk them through your slide deck, your buyer initial counseling session that's really designed specifically to uh, lead to a, a signed buyer agency contract. Then you just share exactly. your screen, you show them the buyer agency, you walk them through the buyer agency contract, you send it to them, whether it's DocuSign or DotLoop or you know, sky what whatever you're using and the natural byproduct of that is a signed buyer agency contract you know in addition to that thanks to you know drone footage virtual tours and professional photography on all these listings what a lot of my agents are doing right now david is they're they're actually uh, they're sending the list of the properties out to the buyers they're walking them through how to you know pull up the virtual tours how to view that stuff asking them to drive by approve the curb appeal and submitting an offer sight unseen see because a lot of those sellers out there they really don't want every tom dick and harry and every looky loo coming in and out of their property they're afraid that this virus might be uh right. spreading for their, their entire family now most sellers though 
they're going to go ahead and open their home to a buyer that they've already you know, successfully negotiated a contract with subject to the buyer viewing and approving the property within 24 hours after acceptance. So that way they're not having to go out and look at 10 or 12 or 15 or some of those difficult buyers, 35 or 40 homes, right? Um, right. They're really only having to look at those that they've analyzed the market. They've looked at the pros, the cons, the features, the benefits, right? They've, uh, they've made a decision that this is the home that they want to buy. They just need to get on the inside of it to approve it. So we're having that happen a lot. So if, by the way, if your sellers are saying, listen, I want to cancel my listing, I want to take it off the market till all this stuff blows over. That's the strategy that I would approach with them. And I would disclose through MLS that, you know, no showings until a successful contract has been negotiated subject to the buyer viewing and approving the property within 24 hours. Right. You know, let's 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 talk about a couple of steps here because because I want to break it down a little bit. Right. So we talked about number one, we talked about sending a list of homes available to your clients. Now, if you're working with buyers, that's the first thing you want to do as the information where before that might have been if you kept sending that stuff, it might have been a little annoying, but the times have changed. Right. So what we're talking about, what we're talking about is informing giving informing and doing good communication by the way this is my third session like this today already and it's it's you know it's it's a it's 11 whatever a.m eastern time right so and i have one scheduled after this that's how i'm communicating when i talk to agents then what they can do is they can do virtual tours they can also do a personal walkthrough if the seller will allow that the next step up from that would be a 360 video walkthrough and post it like you need a place to post it well there's a lot of places to post it. you can have your own facebook group page with your buyer you can also use a product called savvy homes savvyhousehunting.com that's with the, my friend lauren taylor out in california but that's that, that but that's something you got to pay for facebook you don't have to right that's right. another thing to do so this is the process where they see it and they present an offer sight unseen subject to looking at it it's it's amazing and and the thing is is that Honestly, Sean, this is what I've been preaching for a long time and been coaching for a long time, and I know you have as well. And this is the virtual world. A lot of people, not many, some people have been ready for, right? Yep, no doubt. Uh, I've got another client, by the way, in Virginia. He just took a listing through FaceTime. So in essence, uh, you know, he was having a baby and the, the COVID-19 virus and all this scare and all that stuff. So he just called up the seller who was really excited to get their home on the market and said, listen, since I'm getting ready to have a baby and since this COVID thing's going on, can you just give me a tour of your property uh, with FaceTime? So they just jumped on a FaceTime call. The seller walked him through, told him all the updates, all the improvements and everything else. They reviewed the comps via Zoom meeting. He pulls up the listing contract, reviews it with them and sends it to him, DocuSign, and they sign it. So it's not like you have to do that. Now think about all the time that's saved associated with that as well in terms of drive time and then sitting down with them, establishing rapport and everything else and getting the tour with them. That generally takes a little bit longer, right? So uh, exactly. the bottom line is, guys, now's the time to leverage technology. And as you said, David, EXP is really the only one, the only brokerage out there that's really equipped to go all virtual. They've got their 3D virtual campus you can they got over 500 full-time employees inside the world at any time you get instant gratification to any questions that you've got so the world is trending that direction the covid virus is just kind of pushing it forward a little bit faster kind of reminds me of blockbuster from a decade ago where here comes a cloud-based you know organization that literally closes down over 10,000 stores in what seemed like overnight and I, I think that that is starting to happen. So I think it's I think if you look at if you look at Blockbuster to Netflix, use that use that scenario there. Yeah. And then you look at Bed Bath. No, I'm sorry, Best Buy yeah. and Amazon. So Amazon was the showroom for I mean, sorry, Bed, Best Buy was the showroom for Amazon for years. People would go to Best Buy, look at the product they liked if they couldn't look at it online like they didn't like it go home buy it on amazon save 50 60 bucks right best buy they brought amazon in that is yeah. the way they're surviving so what i say to people is if you're work, I and mean, this is not a this is not a commercial this is not an advertisement for any brokerage but i will say is that if you know agents that know how to do this you need to go uh, align with them talk to them or learn how to do it through either myself or sean right to learn how to actually do this work because honestly you just got to be comfortable doing this i mean i got to tell you that there are so many people in this country that i have never met 
that I consider friends because I've done this type of meeting with them on a regular basis. I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago, I went on a, um, a, 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 a trip with, with Grant's people, our mastermind program. There was like 13 of us there. All of us had never, most of us had never met in person before. It wasn't like, hey, nice meeting you in person. It was like, we saw each other yesterday and say, hey man, how you doing? And it's just, it's just an amazing thing. And people, well, I got a meeting today with one of my tenants and he goes to me, I said, I'll send you a Zoom link. He says, why Zoom? Why not just over the phone? I said, it's called human interaction. We can get things done better and have a better understanding if we have to. Yeah, well, hundred percent. Now to give you a little further, well, to underline that, put an exclamation point behind yep. it. 55% uh, of our ability to truly connect with an individual, well, it's based on nonverbal cues, it's body language, it's use of our facial expression, our smile, right? 55% uh, of our ability to connect based on body language. Now, 38% is based on tonality, rate of speech, as well as use of pause. Now, just 7% of our ability to really connect with people is the words that we use. So think about it. If you're sending just a text message, how many times have you received a, a text message, David, where you totally misunderstood the tonality of the text message? It's like, this person's being a jerk and they're not being a jerk at all, right? And it's only because there's only 7% of all faculties available to us to truly connect with somebody. So jumping on a Zoom meeting makes all the sense in the world. If, if rather than sending them a text, just take out your cell phone, shoot a quick video. I mean, just grab a hold of every uh, possibility to connect with that person. Shoot a quick video, text it to them, right? It takes an extra, what, 10 seconds? Rather right. than typing it out. So bottom line is we have the ability to connect with people through technology. And we've got to leverage it, especially in times like today. Now, I'd mentioned if you get a buyer on a Zoom meeting, well, first off, you've got to have your presentation nailed. Now, Absolutely. Uh, when, when I was 21 years old, I, I read a book called The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Now, it, frankly, it changed the way I, I approached business. It changed everything in my life. Now, I was so enthralled in this idea of building a systemized operation. Now, a system, well, it's nothing more, nothing less than a standardized process that produces a consistent and predictable result. Exactly. So I, I, here I am, a 21-year-old 20, kid. I jump on an airplane. I fly out to California. I meet Michael Gerber in person. I spend $10,000 wow. for e myth certification, okay? Now, I got that e myth certification. I came back to the office on fire to systemize everything that we were doing associated with real estate sales. In essence, doing it the same way each and every time to produce that consistent and predictable result. Now, I developed the 20-point buyer presentation in this process, which is what you would probably want to walk this buyer prospect through on a Zoom meeting. In essence, you've got to, let me ask you a question, David. When do you think is the best time to handle challenges or objections? Before. You are so dang smart, man. Most people don't get that. You handle them before they become objections or challenges. And that's exactly what the 20 point buyer presentation does. It not only handles those objections and challenges, it sets and then manages the appropriate expectations with your prospect um, through every step of the transaction. Absolutely. Now, now every one of those 20 points um, was born out of me losing a commission. When I think about what it cost me to put the 20 point buyer presentation together, I'm telling you, it's over seven figures in lost commissions. See, every time I got burned by a buyer, well, we here's the challenge. Most agents, they're in a fix, fix, fix mindset, right? They fix this, they fix that, they fix the other thing. They feel more like a firefighter than they do a professional real estate agent, right? So rather, it's not about fix, 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 guys. It's really about fix, prevent, prevent. So when something right. happens, it's frustration. Maybe you lose a commission, you get burned by a buyer, whatever the case is, Fix it once and then prevent it from ever happening again. And that's where all 20 of those points came from was from my personal brain damage. And you have all, you all have the opportunity to benefit from that. So, uh, for example, setting and managing the appropriate expectations. Are you setting expectations around market conditions? See, meaning we've all worked with that buyer. Maybe it's a difficult buyer. You had to show them 20 or 25 homes. They finally narrow it down to the one that they want to buy. And what kind of an offer do they generally want to make, David? A little bit. Of course. And you know it's not going to be accepted. And here's the point. You don't need practice writing contracts. You want to write contracts that stick, right? Exactly. So part of the 20-point buyer presentation is to share with them what is the average sales price in your market area, what's the average list price to sales price ratio in the market area, and do the math right there with them. Let's say it's 228000 is the average sales price, right? The average list price to sales price ratio, 99.1%. That means the, the seller on average is gonna come down to 226,176. 
Okay. Now, the reason I share this with you right now is frankly, I would rather turn you down now than disappoint you later if you think you could come in and offer five, 10, 15,000 less than the request price and actually expect to get it. So I've got a very direct question for you right now, Mr. and Mrs. Fire. If I found you home at 228 and the seller's only willing to come down to say 226, is that going to be okay with you? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> See, I don't make the market. I simply interpret the market. Okay. So that's just a, a simple example of how you as a professional are going to set and then manage the appropriate expectations. Now, the natural byproduct of the 20 point buyer presentation is a signed buyer agency agreement. Now, it's no coincidence that within about 90 days of me launching and deploying this 20 point buyer presentation and sticking to it religiously, treating it like a system that I had my very first $100,000 commission month as a 22 year old kid. So here is the important, one of the important parts that I see in what you just talked about, okay? And I talk about this with agents because you and I have seen this forever. Where an agent comes into my office as a broker owner and says, he says, my seller's at 330, my buyer's at 320, none of them want to move. I said, whose fault is that? Because well, the damn buyer won't come up. I said, really? It's there. It's, how about your fault and the seller's agent fault? Why? Because if you did what you just did, it's going to be a 228. They'll look at that at 226. Will you accept that? You just took control of the entire situation. You've got them to make a commitment to you. And that is, I mean, that's genius. That is just like, that's, that's beautiful. I love that because this is, I always talk about control, which people forget. Yeah, you know, we're in sales, but we're also in we're also in convincing, which is not always sales. It's, it's it's sales, but we need to control the situation. When we control the situation, we are confident, we have courage, and we're able to get to our commitment much faster. Undoubtedly. So, hey, guys, if you're interested in checking out the 20-point buyer presentation, I've sold tens of thousands of these things uh, across North America uh, over the last several years. Um, it's located on my website. It's just iconcoachingre.com iconcoachingre.com. You have the opportunity to download all digital assets, the 24 scripts that come along with it in script card, uh, flashcard type format. There's a full length audio of me giving it, a full length video associated with it as well. So it comes with PowerPoint, it comes with a buyer workbook and everything else. Guys, it's a plug and play system that when you adhere to that, when you adopt it, when you deploy it, well then the natural byproduct from first appointment signed by our agency contract should be about 100% conversion. So tell me about Icon Coaching. Tell me about how you're building businesses. You started that in 2017, right? Yep. And and one of the things you, you you said earlier, and I know this has a lot to do with Icon Coaching, is you, if you don't stay true to your your vision, you become the part of somebody else's vision. I, I think I paraphrase there, but isn't wasn't that like the 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 image that you wanted to put forth to help people grow their businesses? Is that what that's all about? Yeah. Well, first off, let's uh, let me take a step back. Okay, and cool. Let's agree, David, that if you asked a thousand different people what their definition of the word success is, you'd probably end up with around a thousand different definitions, right? Yes. Like, David, give me your definition of the word success. What is it? Success is, to me is achieving a certain uh, level of peace within myself for my family. And I love that definition, it's perfect. And that's your definition of that word, right? Yet again, if you asked a thousand people, you'd get a thousand different definitions. So I frankly, I just went to the Webster's dictionary. I looked up the word. See, to me, it was so hard, so elusive to kind of get my arms around this thing. What does it mean to be a success? And how do I know if, I've, if I'm there? So I looked up the word and it was really quite refreshing, the definition, and it's really simple. Success is getting what you want. Not right. what somebody else wants or maybe what I think maybe you should want. It's about getting what you want. And that's what Icon Coaching is really all about. So it's number one, let's gain clarity on your vision, not only short term, yet long term. And then let's build the business plan that's going to help you get there. See, I think all goals are accomplishable. We just need the right plan to get us there. Now, I, I build out business plans in a format that I call the ETA which traditionally stands for expected time of arrival, right? Well, right. just like that, this business plan is gonna give you turn by turn directions and let you know how you're gonna arrive at the destination you wanna be. So the E in my model stands for expectation. Now expectation guys is merely a better word for the word goal. See, I think the word goal is overused within our industry. And frankly, when I personally set a goal, David, it almost creates a feeling of uncertainty rather than certainty. 
Like if they right. always the goal, this is big, this is heavy, I might not accomplish that. Now, words carry energy and words affect our emotions and actions. So I prefer to set expectations with people. See, because when I set an expectation, I just expect it to be accomplished. Now, second to that would be targets. So the E is expectation, T stands for targets, and targets are interim expectations that are measurable, yet they're not grounded in a singular action. Many things must happen for a target to be accomplished. And then under each target, we're gonna outline some specific actions that you, a teammate, or even a vendor can take on your behalf to help you accomplish your targets. So you're gonna end up with one expectation, and I recommend number of closed transactions. Let's say I wanna close 100 transactions. So target number one would be around listings because listings are leverage. So let's say I want to be heavily list, listing leveraged, okay? So right. uh, I'm gonna go a 60-40 ratio. Target number one then would be in this case to close 60 listings. Target two would be to close 40 buyers. Target three, well, it's all about leverage and there's four basic categories of leverage. It's the models, what I'm referencing is your economic model, your budget model, your lead generation, your lead conversion models, and if you choose to leverage your people, your compensation models. Second would be systems. So what systems are lacking from your current strategy? Third would be technology, and at Icon Coaching, we bet technology every week. And we only recommend the technologies and the marketing approaches that are gonna pr produce a significant return on your investment. And then finally, it's through people. Okay, so target three is all about those four categories, models, systems, technology, and people. Now under each target, we're gonna outline three to five actions. Like let's go back to target number one, to close 60 listings. But what are you gonna do to close 60 listings? Are you gonna call for sale by owners? Are you gonna call expired listings? What are you gonna do with your sphere of influence past clients? Or what are you gonna do in terms of business to business networking? And what type of marketing approaches through social channels and your email marketing strategies are you gonna take advantage of? As it relates to buyers, how many open houses are you expecting to do per week, per month, per quarter, per year, right? Um, how many networking events can you attend? Uh, what type of advertising are you gonna do, whether it be you know through Zillow, Realtor.com, I don't really recommend that, by the way, yet what are you gonna do in order? I mean, are you gonna engage with a, a platform like Commissions Inc. or KV Core? Those of you with the EXP that have engaged with KV Core and taken advantage of the Making It Rain program, you guys are generating over 100 leads every single month. And most of those, by and large, are gonna be buyer type leads. And then as it relates to leverage, um, you know, what technologies are lacking, what systems are lacking, what people are lacking that you need to get them to align with you and your vision so that they can accomplish their personal goals. So I've never built out one ETA that looks exactly like another, yet at the same time, it's a, a powerful methodology. That's that's really, really cool. And, and it, it, it's so in sync with, with a lot of things that I've been working on. And I, I, wanna, I wanna ask you if the thought of adding one more thing to your ETA, and I know, I know ETA is all set and everything, but I, I, I work on the same basis, right? And I call it a GCAP, GCAP. And I talk about goals, committing to your goals, creating the action steps to actually get there. And then there's one thing like, one thing in my years of being a broker owner and in my years of coaching agents and helping agents through, the one of the things they don't do, they do all this work, they plan all this stuff, they forget to perform. They forget <laughs> to actually do the freaking work, right? Mm -hmm. And they're always getting ready to get ready. So I submit to you that one of the things they need to do, unless it's already assumed, that they need to perform. They need to actually do the work, do the actions, and perform. That's where that's that's the only thing I add to because I just see so many people really know what the hell they're doing and they just don't do it. Isn't that the truth? So it's about getting in action. Now that's one of the greatest challenges that we all have as realtors, right? Is that. Um, we're independent contractors. We want yeah. all the freedom, we want all the flexibility, and we struggle with ways to be accountable to the things that we need to do to make it happen. Now, with that said, um, many of you could definitely improve your production, your profit, simply by engaging in some form of accountability. Now, that could come in the form of just an accountability buddy. Maybe it's a colleague in the real estate industry that you're gonna touch base with once a week or maybe even once a day if you need that type of accountability. Could be a mentor, and at the highest level, I believe that it's a coach. Now, at first, uh, I always act as a consultant with each and every one of my clients. We've got to understand first, where are they at? Where do they desire to be long-term? We reverse engineer that through an exercise called expectation setting to the now. In essence, um, imagine you took your left hand, extended it all the way to the left, right? 
And your left hand represents, well, here's where I'm at today. We're going to get real about that. We're going to get right about it with what no judgment whatsoever. I don't, I don't care if you're at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom, okay? Just get real about it. Get right about it. Take responsibility for where you're at today, okay? Because it has no bearing on where you're going to be six months down the road with a more appropriate and aggressive action, right? So right. You put your left hand all the way out here. This is where I'm at. You take your right hand, extend it all the way to the right. That represents where I choose to be someday. Let's right. gain clarity to that vision because in the lack of that vision, well, you know, biblically, they say the people perish, right? And I believe we all perish if we don't create and then stay true to that, that vision. So what is that going to look like in excess of five years down the road? Then you just simply reverse engineer that, okay? Based on that someday vision, what do you need? where do you need to be in the next five years? Let's identify a benchmark here that once you've accomplished that, then you're definitely well on your way to that long-term vision. And... Once we've identified the five year, then it's reverse engineer it down to three years. Based exactly. on the five year, yeah. Where do you need to be in three years to be on track to obtain the five year and ultimately the someday? Right. And from three years, we go down to a year. By the way, that's what we're going to build our ETA around is that particular benchmark. But we're going to take it even further. So from that year to be on track to go to the, the three year to the five year to the someday vision, right? Then we're going to reverse engineer it back to six months. Where do you need to be in six months? How about in three months this quarter? Where do you need to be? How about the end of the month? How about the end of this week? Where do you need to be? Exactly. Or how about today? Or even right now, what do you need to do right now to take a, a, a step on that straight line toward that someday vision? See, in absence of the clarity around the someday vision, here's what happens. Here's where I'm at, right? And I'm going to bounce up. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go left. I'm going to go right, right? And many people, they just simply run out of time. They run out of energy. They, they're forced to kind of give up instead of go up because they're not living their life in a straight line. Exactly. See, when you've created the straight line, then, it, then you can truly answer the question, you know, is that methodology, is that strategy, is that tactic, is that going to get me closer to the accomplishment of the someday vision or is it simply a distraction? I, I, that's, that's, that's quite mind blowing. Is it simply a distraction? That's, that's well, amazing. <clears throat> well, another thing that, that really distracts us, and this may seem counterintuitive, but I encourage you not to work a to-do list, guys. If you're working a to-do list, then you're really setting yourself up for failure. And let me tell you why. And while, yes, you need to document everything that needs to be done, okay? See, to-do lists, they tend to be really long. Success lists are very short. So we focus in on success lists. See, the problem in working a to-do list, David, and you're probably no different than me, is that we get a feeling of fulfillment or satisfaction when you get to cross something off that list. Does it feel good? Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, you feel like you're, you're accomplishing something right? Heck, I've even been guilty to go and do something, right? Then come back, add it to my to-do list just so I could cross it off and get that feeling of fulfillment, right? Exactly. Like most so, people. So inherently, almost instinctively, here's what we do because we want that payoff. We want that feeling of accomplishing, right? Ultimately, yeah. what we do is we look at our to-do list and we generally, we tackle the easiest thing first. Oh, it only take me 10 minutes. I'll do that right now. Cross it off the list, right? Well, here's the point. The thing that's easiest on your list of things to do is not the thing that's going to move the needle for you, your production, or your profit. That's right. It's just simply not. Guys, there's just five things in real estate sales that's going to improve your production. And when you give an inordinate amount of time to these five things that I call the 20% job description list, uh, by the way, I'm referencing Pareto principle, right? Pareto's principle. Pareto, an economist, he's, he's studying the economics of Italy, and he recognized that 80% of the wealth is controlled by just 20% of the population. And he looks at real estate. Same thing, 80% of the land controlled by just 20% of the population. And guys, when you pay attention, you recognize that the 80-20 rule is as true as the law of gravity. And real estate sales is no different. 20% of your actions and activities in real estate sales will yield a minimum of 80% of your results. And it's those that have figured out how to give an inordinate amount of time to that 20% are the ones that truly crush it with their real estate careers. Now, there's just five things. I'll get them to you real quick. Number one, to practice your skill. Practice your skill. See, you got to know what to say. You got to know how to say it. And you've got to say it to enough people. Now, Absolutely. I mean, I, th that's the one thing we don't do as an industry. That's okay. right. Well, you're exactly right. I mean... Think about it right now. How many of you guys want more appointments? And I know you do. Everybody. When's the last time you set an appointment without having a conversation? It happens, but it's sometimes rare, right? Yep. So obviously, in order to have more appointments, you just need to have more conversations. How many Absolutely. of you guys want more contracts? I know you do. Everybody. Well, you get more contracts. Well, guess what? You get to have more appointments. 
And in order to have more appointments, what does that mean? You get to have more conversations. Right. How many of you guys want 2020 to be your best financial year yet? Again, yeah. what you do, you want to have the biggest bank account balance of your life by the end of this year. I know that, which means you need more contracts, which means you need more appointments, which means what? You got to have more conversations. More conversations. Exactly. Yeah, it's more conversations. It's about knowing what to say, knowing how to say it, and then saying it to enough people. And with mere words, and here's what I love about real estate sales. If you know what to say, you know how to say it, and you're saying it to enough people, you can make over seven figures per year selling real estate. As a solo agent, I've got coach uh, agents that I coach that are a solo agent. They've got one assistant and they're making over a million dollars a year because they know what to say, they know how to say it, and they've got the mindset to say it to enough people, right? So the second point speaks to the point number three of saying it to enough people. Daily, you've got to lead generate, right? So practice first, lead generation second, lead follow-up and conversion is third. And to me, David, those are AM tasks that you Absolutely. knock that out first thing between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. and you it's knock all those right. things out first. And after you're done with that, I don't care what you do, go, go home, sit on the couch, binge watch Netflix, yet here's the point. If you do those three things right consistently every day before noon, the afternoon is going to be taken care of all by itself with the next two points on the 20% job description list, which is going on appointments. And finally, point number five is negotiating contracts. And gang, it's just those that have figured out how to give an inordinate amount of time to practice lead generation, lead follow-up, going on appointments, and negotiating contracts are the ones that really blow it up with real estate sales. So, so this is all that people need? This is all agents need? Those five things? That's it? Well, obviously, there's many other 80% stuff that needs to be done, and that's where leverage really comes into play. In fact, uh, let me take you through a quick model toward mastery. Great. Okay. So, uh, guys, if, if you're not driving or if you got a pen and paper handy, then please draw this out with me. If not, just, just visualize it with me. Now, draw out a pyramid, whether it be in your mind or on a piece of paper. Make it about six inches tall. And then I want you to do four horizontal lines through that pyramid to create five vertically spaced, evenly spaced sections of this pyramid. And the base, I want you to write the word foundation. Foundation. Now there's four things that truly impact the strength and the size of your foundation and the depth of it and everything else. And it's your knowledge first, you gotta know what to say. Second would be your skills, you gotta know how to say it. And when you've practiced those things, it improves your competence, which then improves your confidence and has an, a major impact on the third point of your foundation, which is your mindset. So again, it's your, your knowledge, your skills, your mindset, and then finally, your habits. And with a rock solid foundation gang, you can build a business as big as you'd like. Now the fourth of those was, is my favorite thing to talk about. And I think probably the most important that's habits. CFM Alexander said, people do not decide their future. They decide their habits and their habits decide their right. future. And right. yet people, they form habits subconsciously rather than consciously. So it's really a matter of identifying the activities or actions that you get to take in real estate, applying discipline toward those activities to the point of habit formation. Now, Megan Oten out of the U University College of London in Australia, as well as Charles Duhigg, the author of Power of Habit, they've done a ton of research for all of us around habit formation. In fact, the old adage was that it was 21 days to form a habit. And guys, we found no uh, proof uh, as it relates to studies or experiments that were done to to verify that it takes 21 days to form a habit. In fact, Megan Oten and Charles Duhigg will tell you on average, it takes 66 days to form a habit, 66 right. days. So if you think you could form it in 21 days, that's a, less than a third of the time actually required. Now I've developed a habit tracker where you identify an action that you choose to build a habit around. For example, 10 live conversations every day. Now there's 66 boxes on this habit tracker form. And every day you do that, you put an X on the, the tracker. Now that methodology came from a guy, you might've heard, heard of him, David. His name is uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. See, before he was the Jerry Seinfeld, he, he had a wall calendar up on his refrigerator. He said, the one thing I have to do every day is to write one funny joke, practice it, get the inflections right, the use of pause and things like that, commit it to memory. And every day I do that, I'm put, just put an X on my calendar. And he said, my only job was to maintain the chain. Now think about this. After 30 days, he's got a full stand-up routine, right? At the end of three, five years, well, you get the Seinfeld show and literally anybody on the face of this planet who has access to the internet knows who 
Jerry Seinfeld is, right? It's the compounding right. effects of just doing right. a really simple thing right every day. Now, let me digress. I want to share a quick story. It's one of my favorite stories to tell okay. about habit formation. And it was an aha that I received when I was just 17 years old. Now, my wife and I are high school sweethearts. We met in the seventh grade, started dating when we were 16, got married at 21, and, and now we're coming up on 28 years and, and three beautiful kids along the way. Okay. Now, we're 17 years old at this time in our life, David. And we decided to go see a movie and we invited to her older sister and her sister's new boyfriend. Now, they were four years older than we were. And I agreed I would drive. So I pull up to pick him up. And David, I got to tell you, this dude came out of the house and he was built. I mean, he had freaking muscles on muscles, man. Biceps the size of my thighs, body weight or body fat, maybe you know, 12, 13, 14% or something, right? So I'm 17 years old, David. I want to look like this guy. He looked like Arnold right. Schwarzenegger, right? And right, so right, right. I him a little bit. His name's Paul. I said, hey, Paul, tell me, how often do you go to the gym? He said, well, every day. I said, every day? Wow. I said, uh, how long's your workout? He said, well, at least two hours every day. My jaw about hit the floor, right? And I said to him something like, uh, how do you find the, the willpower, the discipline, or the motivation? I can't remember the words, but I'm 17 years old. I'm having a hard time getting there twice, three times a week. How do you do it every day for two hours? And he looked at me like it was crazy, David. And this was the aha. He said, John, it's just something I do. I mean, so you get the point, right? Absolutely get the point. This is who Paul is. This is what Paul does. And guess what? Paul gets to look the way Paul looks, right? Um, it's part of his self-image. It's part of his paradigm that this is what he does. So I challenge each and every one of you that are watching this, what is that activity? that if you brought to what I call the point of automaticity, where you show up to work and this is who you are, this is what you do, and guess what? Your production, your business, your bank account gets to look like that, right? So what is that? And for most of you, and I'll tell you, there's just three things you can control, right? Three things in this industry you can control. You can't control the buyer's motivation, their cash oh. motivation, their credit score. Can't control Absolutely. any of that stuff. You can't control Absolutely. the seller's motivation, the condition of their property, the location of their property, the price that they need to get out of the property. Sometimes you can't control that stuff. You can definitely influence some of those things. Yet at the same time, there's really three things you can control. It's number one, know what to say. Number two, know how to say it. And number three, just say it to enough people. Even a salesperson with a lot of skill, David, if they talk to enough people, they're going to find people that want to do business with them. That's right. Even, even a dentist, look at it this way. Even a dentist could identify a geographic territory, get access to the phone numbers of the homeowners in that community, start calling into that neighborhood and eventually find somebody who's begging for a root canal. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's a freaking numbers game. That's all it is. And if you want more appointments, just set more, more or just have more conversations, right? It, it absolutely is. And, and um, you know, this has been great. I mean, this has been a lesson for everybody that's watching. It's been a lesson for me. I mean, I've written, made, made a whole bunch of notes. I do want to ask you one other thing. We're running on, 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 on time now, but I want to ask you one other thing. And it's, it really digresses from a little stuff we were talking about. We talked about it the other day. There are two, two phrases you use almost together. One was accelerated breakthrough. And yeah. the other was, um, I mean, they probably don't, don't even go together, but you talked about lead generation. You talked about lead follow-up, but you mentioned the other day lead identification. Yes. Right. So let's talk about lead identification. I think that's really important because everybody says my leads suck. So talk to me about that. Well, first off, motivated prospects are located. They're not created. So to me, you're generating leads, yet lead identification to me means something totally, totally different, meaning that you've got... Okay, imagine you're a prospector, you're looking for gold. I mean, you know as well as I do, the prospector that moves the most dirt is gonna find the most gold, no doubt about that. So right. yes, you've got leads, yet you've got to identify the motivated, yes? And that, that's the whole point behind marketing and all the different strategies and tactics to, is ultimately to just simply create a conversation. Now, I've developed a seven-step formula to a powerful lead conversion conversation that I've split tests to the moon and back with tens of thousands of leads analyzed, guys. And this is by far the proven best practice in our industry. And when an agent learns this, practices it, commits it to memory, it becomes part of their vernacular that they follow this simple seven step formula, their lead conversion doubles, triples, quadruples, or something even more, right? Now that's part of the accelerated breakthrough program that I wrote. See, one of the things that is challenging about my industry and coaching is that in order to make it economically 
feasible and work for somebody like me or, or my competitors is, you know, frankly, in most cases for a one-on-one -on -one coaching relationship, you're, you're looking at uh, somewhere between 500 and $2,000 per month. Right. So I thought that is a significant problem. I saw that the newer agents, the, the middle agents, the experienced agents that maybe weren't at that level of production, yet they needed to improve their knowledge, skills, mindset, and habits. They needed a way to make that happen. So I developed a program called Accelerated Breakthrough, which is essentially four months of coaching and training for a grand total of $350. Um, wow. So I'm going to ask you about this. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so, I mean, it's really soup to nuts. Everything about real estate sales. Session one, we get into accountability. Session two, we get into the seven step formula to a powerful lead conversion conversation, plus the three step formula to gaining permission to have your lender contact your prospect. That, frankly, when you understand that, when you apply it, it will make you hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars over the course of your career. Step number three, we get into the 10 most common buyer objections. Step four, we get into listing lead generation from FISBOs, expireds, business to business prospecting, how to leverage your sphere of influence, as well as circle prospecting. And then we get into self-management. You know, I, I collaborated in the writing of the one thing with Gary Keller and Jay Papazan yep. and developed yep. all the, the training curriculum on the back end of that from the teleseminar series, the keynotes, as well as the workshops that, that we taught all over North America, well, frankly, the world, to all types of different industries. You get to learn all about that stuff. Um, and then we get into you know the initial counseling session for buyers. You get my listing presentation. By the way, our team last year in production, we went on 162 listing appointments and we took 160 of those listings. So again, it's a system that is replicatable, it's duplicatable, and it's delegatable. Okay, uh, that's so a good, that's a pretty good percentage, Sean. Yeah, and then we also get into neurolinguistic language patterns. So you learn about you know tie downs and embedded commands, as well as adverb, temporal, automatic, and awareness presupposition language patterns, direct and, and a direct cause and effect, implied cause and effect, as well as pacing and leading strategies. That when applied, it makes you more charismatic, makes you more influential, and more persuasive on each one of your presentations as well as conversations. Um, we get into social media marketing. Our friend Grant Weiss and I put together some training programs around Facebook ad strategies, and you get all of this. In fact, we throw in $1,396 worth of add-ons and freebies, plus the 16 weeks of coaching, training, and accountability with assignments between sessions, and it's a grand sum total of just $350. That's it. They're done via Zoom meeting live every single week, same day of the week, same time. Each session is recorded, so if you had to miss a session, well, you can come back, watch the replay. Every day before the, the session, you get your workbook, so you print that off. We ship you out a three-ring binder so that you can clip it into the, to the binder as we go through this process together. And every week, there's pull-through work. There's assignments based on what you just learned. See, I don't like seminars. In fact, you can find out about Accelerated Breakthrough either by going to my website at iconcoachingre.com. It's right there on the homepage. Or you can go to seminot.com. See, I don't like seminars. Because I, well, I teach them, it's part of my job description, right? Um, right. The people are taking great notes, David. You know that they have every intention to get back to the office to implement and deploy these strategies and tactics and, and lessons into their business strategy and model. And sadly, though, life happens, right? Happens, and and right. That, that awesome information that they intended to get into action with, as you mentioned earlier, well, it ends up on a shelf. And they, they end up with a really smart shelf, <laughs> right? Exactly. I have one of those. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I've spread it out over a 16 week period with that pull through work to make certain that this, the lessons, the strategies, the tactics, the words, right? Because I provide you with all the scripts, the dialogues, the objection handlers. Uh, I want to make sure that that's sticky, that you actually get into action with it. So 16 weeks in a row, we're bringing it back to your conscious awareness as to what you need to do, when you need to do it, how you need to do it. And I've had agents that have been licensed for 20 years that have gone through that 16 week process and they've literally doubled their production. This is the breakthrough that they were after, which is why we call it accelerated. Breakthrough. Yes, sir. So if you're interested in that, guys, all you have to do is just simply text one word that's breakthrough to 888-111. Again, text breakthrough to 888-111. Our next class is launching in just six days, March 26th, it's launching. And again, breakthrough to 888-111. And if you have any other questions that I can address with you or for you, simply uh, drop me an email at S-H-O-N at iconcoachingre.com. 
be happy to address whatever questions or, or concerns that you're, you're facing right now. I'm just here to help and add value every which way I possibly can. Well, that's great, man. I mean, this has been this has been a great broadcast. We've gone really far. We've, we've gone here, there, and everywhere. And you've answered the questions that I was going to ask you, like, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get your stuff? But there's one thing we have not addressed yet that we need to. And I know that this is the reason. Everybody comes on for the same reason, by the way. This is episode 91, 90 weeks in a row. They all come on for this. Because right? oh, nice. everybody that comes on gets a hat. I know that's really the main reason you came on because you probably saw it at Grant's office. You know, he's got a couple of these. Yep. You know, and, uh, <laughs> so we will be sending you that hat um, yeah. just so you have it, right? And if there's any swag you had, we appreciate it back. Right? Of course. But, uh, you know, so aside from iconcoachingre.com and text BREAKTHROUGH to 888-111, which is on the screen right now, what other way can they reach you and get in touch with you, Sean? Um, I think that would be the best way to do it. Uh, I, I check my email afternoon every single day. So if you send it at six o'clock in the morning, I'm not going to look at it until after 12 o'clock and I will definitely respond. So email Sean at iconcoachingre.com. If you're interested in investigating Accelerated Breakthrough, just text Breakthrough to 888-111. Of course, there's our website, iconcoachingre.com. And there you can actually sign up for a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session. What we'll do is we'll get into an analysis of your business strategy. We'll have you rate yourself on several different points of business development, leadership, and productivity on a scale of one to 10 with the intention to identify any gaps. And then we'll share with you the icon coaching methodology that's gonna help you bridge those ga the gaps quickly, effectively. We're gonna shorten that, that curve and start improving your bank account balance very, very quickly. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Sean, I wanna thank you so much for coming on. Uh, this has been great. I, I mean, we've, we've kept, We've kept normalcy in, in, in play here for everything. And, you know, we're going to be on again. We're going to be on again next week. I believe that we have – I forgot who it was. Oh, next week is um, is Tim Harris. Tim Harris. Fantastic. Uh, you guys are in for a treat. Tim is an absolute rock star. He's a stud. He is my uh, partner in the Libertus group at EXP. And you're really going to love what he has to say. That's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, we have also have uh, – we have Cheryl Easton from, from Ontario, Canada, coming on in a few weeks. And we also have, have Tim O'Keefe, a friend of mine who I've worked with for SEO. He's coming on shortly, too. Sean, right. thank you so much. Please stay on for a minute as we as we break off. Everybody, thanks so much. This is Real Estate Skill Builder, Real Estate Talk, TGIF, Episode 91. We'll see you next week for Episode 92. Thanks so much.